G'day and welcome to the Grow Small Business Podcast. I'm your host, Troy Truen. Each week, we speak with an owner who has grown a business with 5 to 30 team members to something bigger. Diving into their numbers and unearthing the pain they've experienced, we explore what they did to overcome each barrier and what they would do differently from day one. Let's get into it. So Sally, thank you so much for making the time to catch up today. Um, your business is Inspire Ag, and I guess you broadly explained it to me that you provide advice for agribusinesses and farms uh, predominantly around Australia in a couple of key areas. There's leadership, team development, and succession planning. And certainly from what I can see, particularly in agribusiness and, and the farming industry, there'd be huge, huge need for your advice. But um, uh, let me throw it over to you to just tell me a little bit about, I guess, who you are and and how you describe what you do. Oh, thanks, Rob. Thanks so much for having me. Firstly, I, I would love to say that. Um, My pleasure. So, Rob, I... Um, I'm, I'm I'm a farmer's daughter. I, I grew up on the northwest coast of Tassie and I, I now reside in southern Tasmania on the east coast. And so I've spent my entire career either working on farm or for agribusiness companies, but I really only figured out probably in my mid-30s what I wanted to do when I grew up. <laughs> Until then, I, I, I kind of say that, you know, I was passionate about agriculture, but I wasn't really sure about the impact, how I was going to have the most positive impact on the industry. And so, you know, we'll probably get into it a little bit later on about the business side of things. But I I now tell people that I'm in agriculture by design, but I'm in the people space by accident. Yeah, right. Fantastic. So tell me a bit more about the types of, businesses and and farming organizations that you work with and typically what's some of the pain points that are causing them to reach out to you what why do they come and work with you so typically my my clients as you say are, are farmers or farming organizations or agribusinesses and their pain points what's keeping them up at night is usually around um, performance or conduct issues yeah that's that's generally the the main reason that people call me and so once we figure out what the root cause of some of those challenges are that's when i can come into bat and support those clients with putting in systems or processes or doing some team development stuff to help people understand who they are as a leader um, and also the impact that they have on the team, but also help the team um, basically operate in a way where they everyone performs well together. Yeah, excellent. Um, it's really interesting you point out performance and conduct because uh I think that is often the pain point that makes people realise they've got a people problem. But often, from my observation, the uh, the actual cause of the issues have potentially been going on for some years. And you know, can I be as bold as to say that I think a lot of the issues come back to poor leadership and management as the root cause of um, performance and conduct issues. Would would you agree with that statement? You could be as bold as to say that, Rob. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, that's good. And so, I, I, I was going to say one of the one of the statements that we uh, bandy around a bit at Grow a Small Business is the fact that um, people are where all the value in a in a business lies, but it's also I guess the area that causes the most pain and issues and uh, that's something we really focus on a lot. So, Yeah. I've got a saying in what I do, Rob, is that, you know, people are the mess and the magic of of running oh, a small business. That. You know, the whether you're baking biscuits yeah. or you're breeding bulls, it, they are the mess and the magic. Yeah, fantastic. I'll, uh, I'll definitely use that phrase going forward I, with with appropriate um, acknowledgement to, to you on that one. I love it. Fantastic. You can plagiarise that one if you like. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. No, that's great. Um, so Sally, I think you know maybe to help unpack this a little bit more, I was wondering if you could run us through 
a few different case studies, you know, just just at a high level in terms of what what were some of the scenarios that you've come across in the last few years and how do you work with those owners to, I guess, work through their problems and really get their get their business and their organization to a to a better level than when you first found them. Yeah, Rob, so I think probably my best story when it comes to giving you an example of of the type of people that I work with and the impact that I can potentially have on um, on a business is a story that come around about four to five years ago. I was working with a client doing some strategic HR stuff and I got a call from the one from them one day out of the blue. Um basically they said to me, the conversation went like this. Sally, need you at my kitchen table one o'clock on Tuesday. I need to sack a bloke. And I I was left wow. really bewildered by this conversation because, as I said, I'd been involved with doing some strategic HR stuff. I'd been involved in the recruitment of this particular individual. And all the reports up until that particular time had been really positive. So I just couldn't figure out what was going on. I couldn't put my finger on it. So as I sat there at the client's table at that 1 p.m. Tuesday and listened to them for about an hour of the big dish list of everything that they told me that was wrong with this particular individual, yeah. it um, you know, it came down to things like um, poor communication, um, long emails late at night, um, phone calls during the day, um, despite having sent uh, written instructions via an app. And the client actually pulled their phone out of their pocket and showed me an example of a text message they had received from this this individual the evening before. And basically they said to me, this is the type of SHIT we have to deal with. And I looked at the message, a six-line text message, to my mind, had clearly answered the question that they'd been asked via text. Um, so, again, I, I really couldn't see what was going on there. So... Um, fortunately, I'd been involved with them for a little while, so I, I had um, had the trust and respect to be able to ask them a pretty blunt question. And that question was, have you ever considered that this particular employee has challenges with reading and writing? And they completely stopped dead in their tracks and they're like, we cannot believe that we did not pick up on this literally this was something that was right underneath our nose because we've got a, a child who was in primary school at that stage who had challenges with reading and writing they had all, all the tools and resources there that they could have supported this particular individual um, but it was it, they were just so emotionally involved in the situation that they they couldn't see something that was really literally in front of them so fortunately as a part of that strategic HR review process that I was doing with them uh, that actually gave me the perfect opportunity to, what, oh, sorry, one of the things that we'd identified we was going to do as a part of that strategic HR review was actually do a 360 degree review. And so that um, actually gave me the perfect opportunity to sit down and have a conversation with this individual and find out what was going on from their perspective. Yeah, great. And when I do my 360s, what I do is I offer the person that I'm interviewing a piece of paper. And basically, it's it's simply a piece of paper to keep a track of the conversation, the key points that we've um, discussed as a part of that, any actions that they may need to take as a result of the conversation. And as I slid that piece of paper, that one pager across the, the table in the shearing shed that afternoon in the smoker room to um, the, the employee and asked them to write their name, a simple five letter name, two of the letters were the, the same. It was his hesitation in writing it was enough to confirm to me that we were on the right track with literacy and um, perhaps numeracy in this case. And as I sat there and listened from the employee's perspective that afternoon, what I found was that he he could read and write, but his proficiency was really low. And so he felt that by picking up the phone and asking a clarifying question to his boss about instructions that he'd been issued via the app, he was being real and a really effective and efficient person. So he was doing the best thing by the business. Um, so, and then the other thing that um, is really probably going to stick with me for a long time, Rob, is that the employee told me that despite living on the property and his 
um, his homestead being literally, say, 500 metres away from the shearing shed where he would have his, his smoko and lunch breaks. He'd cut his lunch every day and make sure that he didn't go home until after 7 p.m. of a night because he knew by that stage that his two little boys, who were both under five at that stage, would be in bed and fast asleep and that he would not have to risk reading them a story. Oh, gosh. As a parent, yeah. that just stabs me in the heart every time I tell that story. But I tell it because it has such an important message that communication is actually behaviour too. And so if you've got somebody that's been performing well in your business and then all of a sudden things are going pear-shaped, perhaps there's an underlying reason around that. Get And my advice to clients in those sort of situations is to, is to get curious ask questions, um, show some empathy towards the employee and find out what's going on from their perspective because nine times out of ten, it's not what you think it is. Mm. And I think, you know, sort of aside from the story here, Rob, I, I think the other point that I'd really like to make is that um, reading and writing challenges is not an, un not an uncommon problem here in Australia. Something like 43% of Australians have challenges with reading and writing at a grade six or seven level. So, you know, that's that's in a game. There's there's a, a sub message there that in, you know, really thinking about on tailoring the way that you, you communicate and engage with your employees and understanding that just because you can read and write doesn't necessarily mean that they can. And, you know, they may have developed coping mechanisms to be able to help them operate in a really effective and efficient way in the workforce and, and cover up the fact that they've got challenges in those areas. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, so, I mean, that's probably a long story, but that's just one example of um, the type of um, type of situations that I'm often called in to support with my clients. Want to become the best manager you can be? Check out our Kick-Ass Manager course at growasmallbusiness.com. Do the course and add your fellow managers for no extra cost. Join the 30%. 70% of people quit their job because of their manager. You raised heaps of interesting points in that story. Um, and I guess one of the things I've sort of taken away is it's about engaging with your employees so that you can begin to understand the world from their perspective uh, and make yourself as a leader aware of some of the barriers and challenges that your employees may be facing, which I guess, you know, yeah, if that's affecting their performance, you may decide that they they need to be exited, but you may find there's actually, um, you know, some of these issues are, are not intentional or can be worked around and you may be overlooking a great employee um, because you're not understanding some of the challenges that they're facing and maybe there are things you can do to make their life easier and all of a sudden unleash a whole new range of performance. Um, is that a reasonable takeaway from what, I guess, that story that you've told us there? Yeah, 100%. In this particular scenario, um, yeah. The client, having an awareness of that particular situation, was able to adapt the way that they communicated with this particular employee. So rather than sending stuff via the app or a text, they would always make sure they had a face-to-face -face conversation or a phone conversation with them so that they, they really truly understood what was asked of them at the time and that gave them the opportunity also to ask any clarifying questions that they needed. And as a result of that, they, they were able to retain that person within the business uh, but they're also able to get better performance out of them and better productivity as well at the end of the day. Yeah, great, great. Um, and tell me, how do you think you impacted that client over the long run in terms of changes to the way they managed people? What What were some of the, I guess, frameworks or tools or, um, you know, even just different uh, mindset or approach that they took going forward that would have improved their business? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we did a lot of work after that around self-awareness. 
So yeah. understanding the impact that a leader or a manager has um, on the on the people that they lead. There's yep. research out there in the HR world that indicates that it is actually really significant. A leader or a manager is actually responsible for about a 70% variance in team engagement, and that can be either positive or negative. So there was the self-awareness piece. There was... I suppose, an emotional intelligence piece. So understanding that if a, if somebody had been performing well in the business and all of a sudden things were um, not not um, not panning out the way that perhaps they would they thought, um, you know, some awareness around that it's it's not always about the um, well, I suppose it, it's about um, challenging challenging the um, what am I trying to say here. Um, you know, tack, tackle the issue, not the person. Yeah. Um, I guess that's that's the key point there. Um, and I think the other thing was around employee engagement. Like, um, you know, what we had in this business was an engaged employee. So a person who was prepared to, to rock up half an hour before they were due to start um, on any particular day, they did whatever it took to set everything up so that everyone else that arrived on farm um, was ready to go, set up, um, had all the tools that they needed to to get going for the day. And often they were the last one to leave of an evening. So, you know, we've got a, an employee there that has an emotional, um, an, I suppose, an emotional buy-in to the business. And, you know, obviously those sort of people are going to be much more productive than those that, that are disengaged in the business. Yeah. And so, you know, a person that's disengaged or a disengaged employee, um, the ones that only turn up for a paycheck, they do enough to stay off the boss's radar in exchange for that paycheck. paycheck. That, um, you know, the difference between the two is, is said to be about 30%. So, mm. you know, understanding that, you know, this person had operated with the best intention. The employer had operated with the best intention, but the two worlds had collided in this situation to make up a really murky situation that wasn't actually true. Yeah. So, you know, being able to dig dig beyond the situation, find out what's really going on um, so that you can get on with, with what, um, you know, what they need to do to operate a um, safe, productive and profitable business. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Thanks, Sally. So... I guess as we sort of bring this to a close, is there one piece of advice you could offer a business owner who's employing, you know, between five and 30 staff and they're looking to grow their business um, based on your experience and I, I guess the field that you work in, what's the one thing you'd say to a business owner to go away and work on when they get back to the, back to their desk? one thing um, <laughs> we like to make the tough questions uh, on this podcast so yeah um I guess I'd like people to to consider that without um without a team of people who know trust respect and support each other you just happen to be a group of individuals that work for the same business so that that culture piece is probably the it's probably the hardest and most challenging piece of work that you'll ever do, but it's also probably some of the most rewarding. So focus on the culture, or uh, learn to grow grass, and everything else will take care of itself. Mm. Yeah, no, that's great. And tell me if people listening to this podcast are interested to reach out and uh, get some of your advice, where where can they find you? I'm pretty easy to find, Rob. I'm Inspire Ag Oz across all the social media platforms or inspire-ag.com.au. Brilliant. All right, and we'll add that into the show notes as well. Um, Sally, thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate the chat and uh, I'm really impressed by the good work you're doing. Like I say, I can see uh, a lot of demand for your services, getting that people bit right, and um, I really... Um, got a lot of nuggets of wisdom from you today so thanks so much oh it's an absolute pleasure rob and thank you so much for having me it was a um it was great to be able to share some experience and i hope this helps somebody along the way yeah that's brilliant thank you 
And for our audience, we'd greatly appreciate a review in iTunes or whatever platform you listen to us on. More reviews means we bubble up higher in iTunes, etc. So more business owners looking for podcasts to help with their growth will find us. 